In this video, I'm going to be going through urinary catheters. Urinary catheters are tubes that are inserted into the bladder to passively drain urine. Urine drains through the tube into a catheter bag. And the urinary catheters may be used short term or long term depending on the indication. When urinary catheters are left in the bladder, a balloon on the end of the catheter is inflated inside the bladder with sterile water, usually about 10 milliliters, preventing the catheter from falling out. Let's talk about the indications. The reasons for inserting a urinary catheter include urinary retention due to a lower urinary tract obstruction, for example, an enlarged prostate gland, neurogenic bladder, for example, intermittent self catheterization in patients with multiple sclerosis, around the time of a surgical operation, when patients need their urinary output monitoring, for example, when they're acutely unwell with sepsis or in the intensive care unit, for bladder irrigation, for example, to wash out blood clots from the bladder, and for delivery of medications, for example, chemotherapy to treat bladder cancer. A bladder scanner can be used to measure the volume of urine in the bladder. A post-void bladder scan measured after the patient attempts to empty their bladder, can indicate the need for a catheter. For example, if they've opened their bladder as well as they can and they still have more than 500 milliliters left in the bladder, this is an indication for a catheter. A Tom tip for you, a common presentation requiring catheterization is an older man presenting acutely with urinary retention due to an enlarged prostate. Typical management involves inserting a catheter starting the patient on tamsulosin, which is an alpha blocker, and then discharging the patient to have a trial without a catheter, or TWOC, in the community. It's worth remembering tamsulosin for your exams, as they may give you this scenario and ask what medication should be started. The key side effect to remember with tamsulosin is postural hypotension, leading to dizziness on standing or falls. Let's talk about the different types of catheter. Urethral catheters are inserted through the urethra into the bladder. There are various different types. Intermittent catheters are simple tubes that are used to drain urine and then immediately removed. A Foley catheter, also known as a two-way catheter, is the standard catheter that you'll come across quite often which has an inflatable balloon on the end to hold it in place. A coup de tip catheter has a curved tip which can be helpful in navigating it past an obstruction, for example an enlarged prostate, during insertion. And finally a three-way catheter has three tubes, one for inflating the balloon, one for injecting fluid into the bladder for bladder irrigation and one for draining the fluid from the bladder. Suprapubic catheters are inserted directly through the abdomen into the bladder just above the pubic symphysis in the suprapubic area and local anaesthetic is used to numb the area before the suprapubic catheter is inserted. An inflated balloon holds the suprapubic catheter in place in the same way as a urethral catheter. When suprapubic catheters are used long term they can be easily replaced at regular intervals by an appropriately trained person. The catheter you'll see most often on the wards and in your OSCEs is the Foley catheter or two-way catheter. You might find it difficult to insert a Foley catheter into a man with acute urinary retention due to an enlarged prostate because Foley catheters are straight and quite soft. If the Foley catheter fails, it's worth giving a coup de tip catheter a try as the slightly rigid curved tip can make bypassing the obstruction much easier. It's worth getting good at inserting catheters because one of the most rewarding jobs that you can do as a junior doctor is inserting a catheter for somebody who's in acute urinary retention where you can almost immediately relieve the patient's pain and distress. Let's talk about a trial without catheter or TWOC. A trial without catheter involves removing a urethral catheter to see if the patient can manage without it. After the catheter is removed, the urine output is monitored and a bladder scanner is used to make sure that there's minimal residual volume left in the bladder after passing urine. 
Patients may fail the TWOC, meaning that another catheter needs to be inserted. Finally, let's talk about catheter-associated urinary tract infections. Infections are a key complication of urinary catheters. The longer the catheter is in place, the more likely bacteria are to grow in the urine. If you're going to test the urine of a patient with a catheter for an infection, the urine should be taken directly from the catheter or from the sample port using an aseptic technique and not from the catheter bag as this may be contaminated. There are nice guidelines on catheter-associated urinary tract infections from 2018, so please see the full guidelines when you're treating patients. Patients without symptoms do not generally require antibiotics for bacteria in the urine. Patients with symptoms require treatment with seven days of antibiotics. Depending on the severity of the symptoms, this may be with oral antibiotics or they may require admission to hospital for IV antibiotics. The catheter should be changed as soon as possible after the infection is diagnosed, but this should not delay giving the antibiotics.